This is a video on hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. To begin with, a brief introduction of hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. Hypertrophy is increase in size, pylorus is the lower part of the stomach, and stenosis means narrowing of the canal. So the name itself says that hypertrophic pyloric stenosis is stenosis of the pyloric part of the stomach because of increase in the size of the pyloric canal. Hypertrophic pyloric stenosis is the narrowing of the pyloric lumen due to the tissue hypertrophy and scarring. The resultant intestinal narrowing leads to gastric outlet obstruction and bowel obstruction. Hypertrophic pyloric stenosis can very rarely occur in children and adults as it occurs more common in infants known as the infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. Patients present with emesis usually around three to six weeks of life. Children of parents who had pyloric stenosis have a 20% increased risk of developing pyloric stenosis, suggesting a genetic component, although no clear genetic etiology has been identified to explain this phenomenon. Pyloric stenosis is most common in people of Northern European descent with an incidence range of approximately 2 to 5 in every 1,000 live births in these populations. It is far less common in people of African and Asian descent. Prematurity, maternal smoking during gestation, and antibiotics, especially the macrolide antibiotics within the first few weeks of life, are all independent risk factors for developing pyloric stenosis. Epidemiology. It is predominantly seen in males, approximately four times more common, and it presents typically at around three to five weeks of life, and rarely presents after 12 weeks of age, with non-bilious postprandial projectile emesis and dehydration. Etiology. Hypertrophic pyloric stenosis is understood to have both genetic factors and environmental factors contributing towards its etiology. Exposure to nicotine during pregnancy via maternal smoking increases the risk of infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis by 1.5 to 2 times. Bottle-fed infants drink more milk in less time, which may lead to pylorus muscle hypertrophy through overstimulation. Another hypothesis maintains that formula components make it harder to digest, and gastric emptying is delayed, which may also burden the pylorus muscle. Patients with affected relatives have a higher risk of hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, thereby suggesting genetic factors involvement in the etiology of hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. Ethromycin and astromycin are associated with a higher risk of hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, especially when administered within the first two weeks of age. Clinical features. The classic presentation of infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis is that a male infant about three to six weeks old who develops immediate postprandial vomiting, which is non-bilious and forceful. Now, it kind of makes sense why it's non-bilious, because the bile duct along with the pancreatic duct opens into the second part of the duodenum, whereas the pyloric stenosis occurs before the first part of the duodenum. Also, the vomiting is forceful or projectile in nature, because of the backup of the food, owing to the narrowed lumen, which gets piled up within the stomach and eventually is forcefully retracted out of the esophagus to the outside as a projectile vomiting. An enlarged, thickened, olive-shaped, non-tender pylorus of about 1 to 2 centimeters in diameter can be palpable in the epigastrium or the right upper quadrant at the lateral edge of the rectus abdominis muscle in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. A peristaltic wave moving from the left to the right is often evident in the epigastrium. An important sign, the hungry vomitor sign, is seen in patients with hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, wherein the patient demands refeeding after vomiting as gastric contents are emptied. If left untreated, symptoms may worsen and can lead to dehydration, weight loss, and failure to thrive.
Diagnosis. The initial imaging of choice is abdominal ultrasound, which shows an elongated and thickened pylorus. Alternatively, other studies like barium studies can be performed if the ultrasound is inconclusive, which can show a narrow pyloric orifice or a beak sign or a string sign. Endoscopy is another test of choice when the other tests are inconclusive or difficult to perform. On lab tests, the patient shows hypochloremic, hypokalemic, metabolic alkalosis, which is a classic result, but now is uncommon as the infants are more commonly diagnosed and treated early. Hypokalemia usually occurs in infants that have been vomiting for many days or several weeks. Recent studies show that a serum pH of greater than 7.45, a chloride level less than 98, and a base excess of more than 3 plus gave a positive predictive value of about 88% in diagnosing hypertrophic pyloric stenosis in infants presenting with vomiting. The infant should also be assessed for other physical findings to evaluate for complications and to help exclude other disorders that can cause symptoms similar to infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis like mucous membrane and skin derger to assess for hydration, the length and weight to assess nutritional status, especially if the infant has had prolonged vomiting. The skin and sclera are needed to be examined to assess for jaundice, which occurs in patients with hypertrophic pyloric stenosis and icteropyloric syndrome, but also raises the possibility of underlying liver disease. A point worthy to be noted in clinical practice is that hypertrophic pyloric stenosis these days is diagnosed early and the infants do not generally present with any significant electrolyte imbalances. The treatment. Treatment should involve conservative measures and surgery. Conservative measures like correcting the electrolyte imbalances by replacing potassium, intravenous rehydration, frequent administration of small meals, and elevation of the head are required before surgery is obtained. The definitive treatment of choice, however, is a Ramstead's pyloromyotomy. That concludes our discussion on hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. Thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you in our next video.